Once again, welcome back everybody to Gunnerd Corner. My name is Jay Pool, and I'm here with Krista, aka Icy. Hi everybody. Hi there. Now, for the people who don't know who you are, could you tell them who you are and exactly what do you do? Of course. Well, that is a very heavy question. Um, I am Krista, aka Icy. I also go by Fleur de Villainy. If anybody follows my art or my costuming, um, I am a pediatric nurse, soon to be a pediatric nurse practitioner in May. Woo -woo. Yeah. Um, but I have a very variety of hobbies, including making costumes, both um, superhero and historically accurate. Drawing, writing, circus, baking, you name it, I try it. I love to learn new things. But my biggest thing that I'm working on right now is I have a new comic that is written, drawn, colored, and printed um, by me and my company, Hero Villain Designs. That's fantastic. Now, uh, can you tell <laughs> the viewers, um, as well as listeners, if especially if they can't see what we're looking at, uh, can you tell them exactly when did you get started with your business? Of course. So with my print business, um, my husband and I started it like six or seven years ago. Um, I was an artist. I would go to Comic Cons and I knew a few people in the scene. And we noticed that a lot of our friends weren't getting quality prints or they weren't getting prints on time. And so we saved up some money and we bought a printer and which has led to another printer and another printer, and now really big printer. Um, and now we print comics, prints, photos, banners, you name it. That's paper. We generally do it. Um, we print for a variety of photographers, cosplayers, artists, and then just random people in far and few between, whether they need posters for their event or they have team photos um, for their sport we've done a lot of things like that that's fantastic and yes i've seen the printers they're pretty big <laughs> it's pretty cool we've got to meet some really cool people doing it too that's fantastic and you're also a cosplayer oh, is that correct yeah. oh i am in fact I have a sample, though, of our print fresh off the press. Oh, the cutter behind you. Nice. Um, this is Madam Satan, book number two, um, illustrated and written by Shelby Robertson and Elizabeth Mueller. So you can see here, it was a Kickstarter that was up. It is now being funded and being shipped out. So this is one of our comic books that we have printed and produced. Um, for one of our customers, and Shelby's one of our long-term customers. He's one of the first ones that we printed for that kind of got us started into this whole um, print business. That's fantastic. Now, uh, for the viewers uh, who haven't seen any of your, uh, you know, work, where can they actually find your your stuff uh, so they can check it out? Yeah, of course. So, um, if they're looking for printing quotes or printing samples or kind of know what we print on as a business, they can go to Here in Villain Designs. We're on Facebook and we are on Instagram. Um, if it's people that are looking to follow my art personally, um, as well as my costuming, my baking, and my chickens, um, I'm on Twitch here at Fleur de Villainy, Instagram and Twitter and Facebook at Fleur de Villainy. So you can follow me all there. And as of yesterday, I'm on TikTok. I'm still trying to figure that out. We'll see how that goes. <laughs> yeah, I feel old because I still don't know how TikTok works. Apparently, it's like Vine. Yeah, which I never got into. And I really rebelled against even starting TikTok. I'm definitely more of an Instagram person. Uh, but it was highly recommended to me. And I had a few people that really wanted to see my art and my comic that are like exclusively on TikTok, they have said goodbye to the ways of Instagram and Twitter and Facebook. And so I figured I'd test the water, see how it goes. That's fantastic. Now, can you tell uh, me a little bit about the, the comic that you wrote and are producing? Of course. So this is my first ever comic, um, written, illustrated, and colored by me. Um, it is a 20 page fully covered like standard comic book size comic. It's a young adult comic 
that's in the fantasy genre. So the main premises of the comic is that Violet, the main character, um, is a college student in her last year of college, and it follows the story of her and her best friend, who's been able to talk to ghosts since they were like little kids. And basically, something happens in her life and her grandparents kind of reveal um, a mystery about her past that completely turns her life upside down. Um, I won't spoil too many details for those of you that want to keep it um, on the down low for when they pick up the book. And then also this mysterious stranger starts stalking her and running into her and kind of harassing her. So it's just this process story of how her life turns completely upside down. She learns that her parents aren't who she thought they were and that her background is a lot more interesting than she thought being just an ordinary girl at the end of college. Um, This is book one. I've been writing this story for like over 10 to 15 years. Um, I got a little bit to it every time because it was originally going to be released as a young adult novel. And then finally I'm like, I have got to release it. And so I decided to combine my writing skills with my art artsy side and create a comic book and release it through Kickstarter. That's awesome. Now, uh, are there any other inspirations that you had uh, while writing this book? Um, Yes, lots of inspirations actually, a little bit here and there. I've always written, um, since I was little, I love writing short stories and long stories. Mm -hmm. I'm also an avid reader. I read about 30 to 50 books a year mostly in the young adult um, section. Um, I was really inspired growing up by the Lord of the Rings and Twilight, Harry Potter. Um, I was definitely a Potterhead um, and still am. So those kind of just inspired me to get into the world of fantasy and young adults. Um, and so it's just kind of been a creative spurn of all of that coming together. That's pretty cool. Yeah. Um- it's it's interesting how uh, some comic book uh, writers and creators how they get into the industry, and they have other uh, people that they look up to. Do you have um, anybody that you know personally in the comic book industry that you look up to that you maybe want to emulate or maybe want to you know kind of um, kind of say say thank you for uh, helping me out with um, with getting me started. Oh gosh, where do I start? I have a very, very, very long list of both artists, writers, comic book producers that I've been both friends with and that have really both inspired me to kind of pursue my artistic um, you know, endeavors as well as just looking up to seeing what they've made. Uh, to name a few just off the top of my head, I mean, Shelby obviously with everything that he does has been really inspirational to like know that, that, you know, there is a possibility out there. Um, Kara, AZ Power Girl, has been very supportive of, you know, women empowering women and us putting our art and writing out there. And then two artists that really, you know, have supported me and I've supported them through the years, um, Amber Skies Cosplay, and then also Sam. Um, She does some amazing art some great tarot decks and then she also is writing and producing her own um, short television show right now that's awesome that's fantastic um so with all the uh you know the independent comic books that have come out you know probably i would say maybe the past 10 years uh, Mm -hmm. have you seen this sort of shift uh between some of the you know the bigger name companies like marvel dc uh, and then you have all those independent comic books because I go to sometimes some comic shops and sometimes I see that a lot of independent comics are a lot more popular than the big name, uh, big, you know, big two, what do you call them? Mm-hmm. You know, I've definitely seen that two shift over the last five to ten years. Um, I think part of it is just we're coming into a society where we're going back to that shop small, support local um, you know, support creative endeavors, support artists. And it's nice to be able to connect with artists and authors, see, see them at comic cons, you know, follow their Twitch streams, be able to chat with them 
on their live streams, be able to see their daily posts. And while I love Marvel and DC, they're so big and there's so many people that I feel work for them and create amazing work, but get overshadowed a lot by the big title of Marvel or DC, where these independent, you know, artists and comic book writers are doing all of it themselves like this is their passion they pour their blood sweat and tears they're not just doing it for the money they're not just doing it because they're already established they're doing it because they love art and they love what they want to do and we all rise together exactly exactly uh, now do you have any um independent uh comic book companies or comics in general that you read um, I do. There's a lot of local um, Arizonan comics that I like to read. I'll, sometimes I'll just pick a few up here and there, especially if I go to the comic shop where I'll see them on Kickstarter and I'll get their um, comic to see if it's within my genre and just to support them. We also print for a lot of um, independent comic um, writers and authors that print for us. So I kind of get the ability to read their book and to really like help empower them and share their projects. That's awesome. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. It's, it's cool to uh, get to actually meet the artists or the writers and sort of build a community, uh, especially local community uh, with these people, because, you know, not only are you buying their books, mm -hmm. but you get to discuss with them, you know, what, why did they write this or why did they draw this or why did they, they use this style and sort of, um, you know, build not just, um, you know, the buyer and seller type of uh, relationship, more like a, a friendly relationship. And it and it helps, especially with um, not just big cons like uh, Phoenix Fan Fusion, but also smaller cons like, you know, Tucson Comic Con to, mm. to really, you know, get the, the word out for a lot of these cr local creators yeah. and give them a voice yeah definitely and I've, I've always found you know it's always interesting seeing some artists that that haven't put anything out but they're just incredible at either writing or uh drawing or even painting and i'm mm -hmm. like wow you haven't you haven't worked for any company before and they're like no i just want to stay independent or just you know but no, sometimes I see some of these people out there and I'm like, wow, you really could have like a good job or you can do, yeah. do stuff on your own and create you know, incredible stories. You know, there's a reward that comes to like staying independent too because you don't have the man that hangs <laughs> above you. Like you are your own boss. You are your own deadlines and it's up to you to really make yourself successful um, you know, to reach out to people, to empower others and help them empower you. Um, it's a lot of making connections, sharing your passion with others, getting to talk to people. You know, I've read a lot of books. I've read a lot of comics. And, you know, there are some authors that just write so well you can't help but love them. But there's some authors that write okay but you fall in love with them and their story and their passion. And that makes their book or art or comic just so much more than it even is, which is really kind of neat. And then you feel that like bond to them too. Exactly. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Now uh, for, for your comic, um, can you, you have, a, you have a Kickstarter, is that correct? I do have a Kickstarter and it only has, oh goodness. I think like 41 hours left on it. Only 41 it. hours. I know we're at the tail end. <laughs> the tail end. It's always nerve wracking when, when that happens. It's just like, ah, uh, I try to get this interview out as early as possible. So yeah. sorry about that. <laughs> oh no, it's okay. My schedule this week has been crazy. Oh, I'm yeah. just glad that you were able to get me on. Oh yeah, definitely. With, you know, um, with Kickstarters, you always are on a, a time crunch. And, um, you know, uh, when you told me you wanted to stream tonight, I guess, I, you know, we really don't have to be in the way of worrying about editing. I mean, I am going to edit this video because I have literally two cameras on me right now. So I have to edit the videos side by side. But uh, when it comes to, like, getting out immediately, streaming is the best way to do it, even though it is eating up my computer memory right now. And I'm just worried it's going <laughs> to crash any time right now. <laughs> Well, don't crash too hard. 
Um, can you, uh, so the Kickstarter, can you tell the uh, viewers where to find your Kickstarter at the moment? Yeah, I would love to. So my Kickstarter for my comic is, my comic is called Wolf and I. Um, so it can be found on Kickstarter under Wolf and I. Um, you could look for Fleur de Villainy or Wolf and I. It's part of Kickstarter's Make 100 campaign. So Kickstarter has this campaign they did in January where if you started your campaign between January 1st and January 31st uh, with a limit of 100 backers, so or 100 total product, you could either have 100 of the same product or like variations that all added up to 100 total. Um, so it's for either small creators who want to get their idea out or for big creators who want to offer a very limited run of one item. Um, so it's a really neat, you know, idea that they put out. So this comic was going to be uh, pushed back until the summer, but when they announced the Make 100, I'm like, this is for me. This is what I want to do. So I'm only offering 100 copies of this first um printing run of this comic. I will have the first one available again after if I run out of the 100 copies and when I release the second book, but it won't be the limited numbered version. The cover is going to be different um, and it won't come with the swag that this first one is going to come with unless you back the second one, which we're going to have some really cool swag with that one too. Nice. Um, so I had four tier rewards on this equaling up to 100. Um, I had the standard cover, which there are 38 left of, and that's your standard comic book cover. It's going to be the 20 pages like I talked about of the story. So it's the first part of the story of Wolf and I. Um, so it's 12 plus shipping and it's going to come bagged and board and shipped in a safe, um, special comic mailer to help prevent damage and shipping. Um, the second tier I have is a $20 tier. It comes with a rainbow metallic holographic cover, which is really cool. It's something that we offer. Um, and so when you get the print or the comic, which I actually have a copy of the print here, um, it's very shiny. Ooh, it is um, shiny. And it's, you know, when you see it in a video or in a picture, it doesn't do justice to what it looks like in person. It picks up a lot of the rainbow hues. It's very reflective. It is. And it's a really cool collector's um, item piece. So that'll be really cool with that. And I only have 25 left of that tier. Then I have a third tier, which is the a gold tier. So the cover is going to be printed on a gold metallic paper. I only had 10 of these that I offered because it's a very limited, a little bit expensive cover. Um, and I have four left, and that's a $50 tier. Um, so there's not many left of that one. And then my last, the highest tier was a executive producer package. And that one came with one of each and the number one. So it'll be one of 50 one of 40 and one of 10 um, of each of the comics. And then it also is coming with a hand sketched one of the pages from the comics. Um, and then for that one, it's also coming with an exclusive one only run. We have this really cool PVC clear cover that we've been experimenting with here at Hiram Villain Designs. And so it's like a peekaboo cover. So the clear cover is only going to be part of the cover. And when you open it up, it's going to reveal um, something behind it. So it's kind of a really neat exclusive, like one off thing. Unfortunately, that went day one. So we don't have any more of that level. But if it's something that people are interested in, we are going to um, bring that back for book two. Um, the other thing with our Kickstarter is we had some stretch goals. So our first stretch goal was at $1,000, and every backer that purchased a comic would get a free print with their comic, and we achieved that. So every backer um, who has backed it is going to get that free print. And then yesterday, we achieved our second stretch goal, which was um, 1250 So every backer is going to get a button pin that's one and, uh, one and a quarter inches, um, a little fan button pin with their comic. Um, I have three more stretch goals that are left on here. So, we can, so we'll see if we get them. The Kickstarter ends Sunday um, around noon Arizona time. So the other three goals, there's a $1,500 one. So every backer is going to get a sticker with their comic. Um, and these stickers are pretty neat. They're um, wash resistant. 
you know, up to a certain amount. So they're really good for like water bottles um, or binders or folders or stuff. They're kind of cool. If we hit the $2,000 level, I'm going to be adding four extra art pages into the book, um, which is really fun. And I'm really hoping we get there because I've got some neat ideas. If not, I'll hold them off for book two. And then the ultimate um, stretch goal that I have, which we'll see if we get there. We're a little bit less than halfway. So it takes some big push over the next day and a half to get there. But if we reach all 100 backers, um, I'm going to order an enamel pin of the wolf and all backers will get a free um, enamel pin of the wolf. That's fantastic. That, that, that sounds pretty cool. Now, um, with, uh, you know, with Phoenix, Fan, I was going to say Phoenix Comic Con, but Phoenix Fan, well, let's say Fan Fusion. Yeah. Please Fan Fusion. Yeah. yeah. With Phoenix Fan Fusion coming up, are you going to be there to promote your new comic? So, unfortunately, I was not able to get a table at Phoenix Fan Fusion this year. Um, combination of graduation is like, that same month, so I have a whole lot personal going on. However, um, I will be at Maricopa Con in August. I'll have a table there, and this year, which is different from the past eight years, we will have tickets available at the door. Maricopa Con is a gaming convention here in Arizona. It's all weekend, tabletop dice, RPG, you name it, you bring it, we'll play it. Um, it's a really fun get together, and in the past, you were only able to get your ticket through Kickstarter, but we changed venues this year to a larger venue um, based on how many people we had respond to the Kickstarter. So we actually have um, extra tickets now with the larger space that we're able to sell the door. Not a ton, but um, a decent amount, which will be fun. I might be coming this year. So <gasps> yay! Yay! <laughs> Now we can do live interviews. <laughs> hey, I'll be there. Hey, with my new camera, yeah, I'm, allow I'm allowed there. to ho I'll hook a mic up so I can talk. So, so that's Sweet. pretty, yeah. If you come, we'll look forward to it. Yes. All right. Um, also, uh, are you also looking forward to like maybe Tucson Comic Con um, later in the year? I am looking forward to possibly going to Tucson Comic Con. Uh, it's changed a little bit in the past. It was one of our big conventions that we went to. Um, we haven't been in the last two years just because of the weekend that it's fall, uh, has fallen on. Uh, but it is something that has been in the talks about getting a table there. That's awesome. Now, you said uh, for, the, for the story, for your comic, you were looking originally into making it uh, a YA novel. Are you thinking of maybe even later expanding the storyline, not just beyond the comic, maybe even doing like a prequel series or something else like that, or a side story to it as, as a YA novel as well? You know, it is something that has crossed my mind, and I definitely have some storylines written up um, that could be made either into a um, short, like a, sh a short YA novel, um, or into just a secondary like spin-off comic book. Um, so we'll kind of see how the waters go, how people like it. If it's something that really picks up a lot of speed, I'd love to put out um, like teaser small books, especially like on Amazon, like a $1 short story book in the future. Fantastic, that's fantastic. Now, uh, before we go, because my camera over here is telling me I have minutes left on that on that thing. <laughs> but uh, before we go, um, can you tell the viewers uh, uh, exactly all the links you can get? Because I will put them down below when I edit the video all together. But currently, you know, because we are live also on Twitch, um, just so that they can go to uh, and help support. If they can, please support. Yeah, and if you yeah. can't, just share it. Like Just share it. Sharing. You never know what friends you have that love shape-shifting wolves and fantasy and <laughs> adventures into another world that are unexpected. There's some kind of hints thrown at the end there for you. Exactly, exactly. Um, I so for the Kickstarter, um, you can find me. You can either look up Fleur de Villainy or Wolf and I on Kickstarter. It is under the Make 100 campaign list. If you scroll down that, you should find it got a pretty big picture of um, our main two characters here. 
Um, and then if you find me on Twitch, Twitter, Instagram, or Facebook under Fleur de Villainy, Facebook is under IC of Fleur de Villainy, um, I have posted the links to the Kickstarter on there so you can follow it. And then if you follow any of the social medias, you'll be able to see when I stream work in progress videos of the art for the content of the book and for book two. Um, and then you'll be able to see, you know, updates and kind of what's going on with everything there. That's fantastic. Yeah, d definitely go check that out. And, and please support this comic if you can. Um, I would love to actually see you um, also try to uh, go for like free comic book day this year because that's another that's another place to actually really get out you know creators go out and show people their comic and go like hey I, I'm out here I'm trying to you know really promote my comic or yeah story so I'm working on that right now I've contacted a couple comic book stores um, local in the valley to kind of see what um, they're doing, what they want to bring out. I unfortunately don't have the funds to be able to give my comic away for free, but if I did, I'd have something like bookmarks uh, or smaller prints that I could give out for free and have my comics for sale. So we'll see how that goes and who I hear back from. But if you know anybody who's looking for a author, artist, indie comic book person that would come out for a free comic book day, send them my way. I would definitely try... Um drawn to comics um ken is very good at that so yeah yeah i think i think you might know you know him yeah i was gonna say ken, yeah we know, we know ken i've done a couple events down with glenda letters with them so he he supports a lot in the the uh, local uh, comic book community and so he's definitely someone to contact and help uh promote your new comic yeah and, and follow me on twitch and other social media whichever follows you know whatever floats your boat Oh, yeah, and definitely when I see you, I will be purchasing a comic. That is a promise. <laughs> awesome. I, I, I hope you enjoy it. I try to support as many people as I can, as much money as I can get, but, you know. <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, you know my motto. We all rise together, whether it's sharing, supporting, purchasing, you know, or just telling my people about your people, and they tell their people, and it just, this is how small, you know, small artists, small um, communities just expand is from the support together. That's fantastic. Now, before we leave, anything else you would like to um, <laughs> tell the viewing audience about, especially your printing company? Oh, well, um, we're open. You can always send us um, an email. The best way to get through through to us is either send us a message on here on Villain Designs um, or send us an email at heroinvillaindesigns at gmail.com. But make sure you're spelling villain right because I can't tell you how many times people have gone to find us and they can't spell villain right, <laughs> especially in this community, which is really funny. They always flip the A and the I. Um, so, yeah, so they can message us for inquiries if they have any printing needs. We do anything from small, small orders to big, big orders. Um, you just send us what you need and we'll get you a quote back. Oh yeah, definitely. And I've used I've used you guys before, which I'll be using you guys mm -hmm. again. Um, and they're they're quick and they have good quality. Ooh, we got a backer. Yes, awesome, fantastic. Woo. Uh, yeah, they're definitely they're quick and, and they're uh, good quality, and they'll definitely deliver to you at a comic con. <laughs> we we do. We have definitely delivered a comic con before. Um, we've delivered both like during hours after hours usually we do de uh, deliver to local so we're here in glendale arizona so we'll, we've delivered to tucson comic-con we've delivered to phoenix comic-con when amazing arizona tier used to be here we would oh. deliver to amazing comic-con so oh yes uh, we, we've also done some of the anime cons that are here too we've dropped off stuff for customers we prefer if you come pick it up but we understand what it is to run out of something in the middle of the day. And if, as long as we can accommodate, uh, we try to help out where we can. Exactly. Exactly. And we thank you for it. <laughs> All right. So that is it for the video interview segment. Um, so thank you, everybody, for watching. I will continue with this little stream really quickly. Um, but right now, I have to turn the camera off right now because it is counting down to 20 seconds. <laughs> oh, but before you run out of battery. All right, and remember to enjoy your chimichanga.